Hello, good afternoon, and welcome back. In the interest of continuing the theme of censorship, I'm going over Article 11 and Article 13 again, as it is slowly but surely coming into place, regrettably, and the good news from America, particular Florida, and the GOP over there. So to start with my colleagues, friends, and uh, fellow Brits for the within the EU for the time being, and all the more reason why we should leave, and mainly affecting you guys who are interested in the same things that I'm interested in, Articles 11 and 13. So this is from 15th of April, and I know it's nearly a month old, and another article is from last year, but that's because of the new bill being suggested in Florida. So <clears throat> this is from the European Council itself. EU adjusts copyright rules to the digital age. The EU is amending its legal framework on copyright to make it fit for purpose in today's digital environment. It, it's always worrying when <laughs> boomers decide what fit for purpose in today's digital environment means if they don't understand it. <laughs> if they need help turning on their computers, it's probably not a good idea for them to be making laws about it. The Council today adopted a directive that modernises existing EU copyright law to pave the way towards a true digital single market. The new rules ensure adequate protection for authors and artists while opening up new possibilities for accessing and sharing copyright protected content online throughout the European Union. Where it says ensures adequate protection for authors and artists, what it's basically saying is enables the mainstream media to reassert its dominance and have a stranglehold on the content that it has and will only allow publishing to um, fellow fraternising members who wish to maintain as the ruling class. So here we have from the Romanian Minister for Culture and National Identity, fellow Daniel Bries, I am very glad that we have achieved a balanced text creating multiple opportunities for Europe's creative sectors, which will thrive and better reflect our cultural diversity and other European commune values. <laughs> Common, sorry, I know, I need to say communist there. But <clears throat> also for the users, whose freedom of expression on internet will be consolidated. Freedom of expression be consolidated. Slightly paradoxical, but anyway. This is a milestone for the development of a robust and well-functioning digital single market. The irony here is, of course, a single market is defined as an association of countries trading with each other without restrictions or tariffs. Without restrictions. Yep. And what you're putting in place are more restrictions. The directive addresses a variety of issues which can be grouped together and under three categories. Adaptation of copyright exceptions limitations to the digital and cross-border environment. Improvement of licensing practice to ensure wider access to creative content. This is <laughs> quite an issue here. Um, as it says, the directive provides for harmonised rules facilitating the exploitation of works that have stopped being commercialised. Okay, no worries. Issuing uh, of collective licences with extended effect and rights clearance for films by video on demand platforms. So again, it's just allowing further growth of the uh, tech monopolies and not for individuals to rise up the ranks. And that's why I like free market without limitations, because then that gets rid of the... Uh, lobbying monopolies and allows individuals to create content for themselves instead of having to, to go through a ridiculous big uh, bureaucratic structure in order to get anywhere and see achievement of a well-functioning marketplace for copyright and it, even just in, uh, in in brief with what YouTube's had to do with it being maybe a bit heavy um, bit DMCA heavy uh, Digital Millennium Copyright Act um, with allowing individuals or, or groups to say, oh yeah, that's ours, so um, we're going to copyright it and uh, take that money from that person, or at the very least is going to demonetize it for that individual when they are still using the work in a transformative manner, which means that they are well within their right to use the clips. And that's without it being a law in the EU, and the EU is trying to push this even further. So the directive introduces a new guide for press publishers for the online use of press publications. Authors of works incorporated in the press publication will be entitled to share of the press publisher's revenue deriving from this new right. And that's the issue. When it says share of the press publisher's revenue, that's very optimistic. And in reality, of course, it just means take all the money and restrict people from being able to be able to use it in the first place. I mean, if, if this is basically censorship to say, oh yeah, well you can't uh, <clears throat> use our, our stories and, and information and break it down, you know, if because of course, if, if you've got an argument 
with a, a particular idea or ideology, then you address it, you use exactly what's, what's been said, and you break it down by quoting the text, but now they're saying that you won't be allowed to do that. <clears throat> in which case they can just say, oh yeah, that's, that's, that's heresy, they're, they're not talking about anything in particular. It's like, well, we're not allowed to. And we, we all know what happens with the extension of censorship and how that then leads to violence, either violent uprising from the, the citizens, the denizens and the individuals, all the more reason to have gun rights so that you can prevent a, a tyrannical government from taking you over, which is also why tyrannical governments restrict gun rights uh, to begin with, so that it's much easier to take away the, the public, um, yeah, so just take away the public, um, or the tyrannical government will take the people away. So either the individuals will rise up as they're annoyed that the, their voices aren't being listened to, Brexit is of course an example of that, we shouldn't be having these MEP elections, and that's all the more reason to vote for people who will want to leave the EU, whoever you wish to vote for. Obviously, Northwest, I'm saying, Tommy Robinson, and he's been smeared enough, as as it happens. Um, and, of course, he's been visited by the police saying, oh, yes, sign this document to say that we've told you to stop doing what you're doing. And if you continue to <laughs> exercise your your rights, freedom of speech rights, or whatever's left on the Magna Carta in the, in the UK, uh, and somebody does kill you, then we're not responsible. To which, of course, Tommy's objection is, well, how about you actually do your job and don't have one law for some people and another law for other people? Why don't you just have one law across the board? And that is what I'm for. As Tommy has said repeatedly again and again and again, he has had many verifiable threats and no arrests have been made. He's had people assault him and no arrests have been made. In indeed, South Wales Police liked a tweet which was advocating for uh, encouraging more milkshakes to be thrown at Tommy and it, it's up to you if you think oh well milkshakes are fine because it's you know as long as someone isn't really lactose intolerant what's the issue um, but of course even if you think that that's okay and I, I don't it's still assault that I was to say that that milkshake might just be a cover for something else that if someone throw something, you know, like pocket sand, then that's to disorientate the person and then you can stab them or punch them or further attack them when they don't know what's going on. Or, of course, that liquid could be acid. We all know which groups are keen on using acid. But there's this breakdown. What is Article 13 that use? Divisive new copyright plan explained, and it goes through the meme ban and the link tax, and that is what I would like to focus on. So Article 13, lucky for some, unlucky for... Everyone, this is the part of the directive on copyright that has most people worried. This article states that online content sharing service providers and right holders shall cooperate in good faith in order to ensure that unauthorized protected works or other subject matter are not available on their services. And yes, you, you can read the full document, the full 64 page document here, if you want. I'll go through that in a later video, but I'm a bit short on time today. So, what does it mean? Boil down all this article is saying is that any websites that host large amounts of user-generated content, like YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, are responsible for taking down that content if it infringes on copyright. And the issue when you have companies this large is they can't monitor it. I, I, I forget exactly how many thousands of hours are uploaded each day and just a few thousand moderators that these companies have in order to tell what is copyrighted and what isn't. But if if they're concerned about being fined exorbitant amounts, then they're just not going to function in those areas because they don't want to take the risk, and that's fair enough. Why take the risk if you don't have to? And the other one, which is the link tax, is the issue for uh, people like myself and other people who would consider themselves <laughs> independent journalists trying to debunk other people's content uh, if, if they're putting forth false ideologies or at least uh, damaging ideologies, or ideas that are just incorrect, if you're trying to say, oh, for example, to me a piece about Tommy Robinson, if I'm trying to say, well, this isn't true and here's why, what are your claims, well, this never happened, I won't be allowed to do that, because I'd be having to pay these people and I haven't got the money to do it, and how much are they going to charge? Who knows? As I says, no one is really sure how this one will work either. That's a big issue. It's like, oh yeah, th this sounds like a good idea. It's like, right, but what does that mean, practically speaking? It ain't gonna work. Which is why... It's like government trying to ban drugs or the war on drugs. Well, the pharmacists are always going to be a step ahead and they're going to develop new ways to get what they want in you know, with, with drugs. 
And the same goes with technology. They say, oh yeah, well let's, let's ban this. Well, the, the criminals are always going to find a way around it. It's the same thing with uh, banning guns or, or self-defense weapons, that the criminals are always going to find a way around it. And what, what I've thought for a long time is that, let's say, you're worried for your own safety, so you're going to take a weapon out to try and defend yourself. And let's say, just for argument's sake, you can successfully take it out a thousand times and on your thousand first time you're going to be stopped and searched and you're going to be arrested for carrying that prohibited weapon. Now, let's say you know that you want to attack someone preemptively, you only need to take that out once. Chances are you're not going to be stopped before you can attack that person and that person can't carry a weapon because <laughs> maybe they, they've thought about it over a thousand times before, in which case they would have been stopped already. So you're just empowering criminals if you're banning people from defending themselves, both with weapons, as we've just gone over, and with speech, as we're going over here. Uh, but, but, look to America. Good news, good news. GOP lawmaker introduces Stop Social Media Censorship Act to Protect Free Speech, from Joe Kutis. Um A bill to protect free speech on social media and fine big tech a minimum of $75,000 if they delete or censor or use political speech. Um, it will only apply to social media firms with more than 75 million subscribers, which are open to the public. I would say, obviously, instead of subscribers, users, but that's mentioned later in the article, that it would make more sense to find them in proportion to how many users they have. It's similar to, I believe it's in Germany, with their um, uh, company operating laws that the fine for the company is proportionate to how many employees they have. It's the same principle that I would say would make sense here. Therefore... You might say only more than how many million users because otherwise there were too many to be able to police, but by all means. But then once you hit that threshold, it is a certain amount. So if they say 75,000 when, it, when it's over 75 million, so you're going to charge them one thousandth or 0.1 percent in dollars of the amount of users they have. That would make sense to me because then it is proportionate to how successful the um, the, the, the company is. It's, it's a similar thing to taxation. It's a percentage, not a flat fee. <sighs> yes, okay. The, uh, the bill also prohibits large social media sites from citing so-called hate speech as a justification for political and religious censorship and authorizes the Attorney General to bring a civil course of action on behalf of a social media website user who resides in this state and whose religious speech or political speech has been censored, which is fantastic as far as I'm concerned. The bill makes it clear it would allow social media sites to censor, calls for immediate acts of violence, obscene or pornographic material, that which entices criminal conduct, and that which involves minors bullying minors. So, the... Sorry, it's obviously in, in accordance with the, the First Amendment. The only difficult thing here is when it says obscene material, is that in the contents of pornographic, in which case, fair enough, that's clear cut, and that which involves minors bullying minors will... How would you define bullying? Uh, I know I've, I've been on the receiving end of this in my previous years of life, but it, it's a bit of a grey area that I'm, I'm not sure how you would define that because it's a similar thing with conflating Islamophobic and, and racist and anti-Islam and anti-Muslim. That the, These are all a rather grey area. But thinking about smearing people with particular words, this is courtesy of the John Birch Society. Thank you to... V for showing this clip, and I will as well. In 1943, the following directive was issued from party headquarters to all communists in the United States. It read, When certain obstructionists become too irritating, label them, after suitable build-ups, as fascist or Nazi or anti-Semitic, and use the prestige of anti-fascist and tolerance organizations to discredit them. In the public mind, constantly associate those who oppose us with those names which already have a bad smell. The association will, after enough repetition, become fact in the public mind. And this obviously goes back to the Goebbels quote that if you repeat a uh, big enough lie long enough and hard enough, it will become true. But only for the time being that it can still be asserted as true, which is why freedom of speech is so important. And also, this comes back to the psychological effect of anchoring, which is that the first idea you, you hold about something sticks with you a lot longer. Um, it, it's used particularly in sales, but my point here is that if you hear about someone, again, we'll go back to Tommy Robinson, that, oh, he's a racist, 
and you hear that a lot, and then somebody says, oh, okay, like, can you give me an example of that? It's like, well, <laughs> what, what are you talking about, an example? This is just known as a fact. It's like, but you got any examples? No, but these people wouldn't lie about me. It's like, well, hang on. <laughs> lie about me, sorry, lie about someone. It's like, well, hang on, and I, I've for, forgotten the name now of the, of the effect. But the idea is that if you're, let's say, reading a newspaper, and you're reading something that you know a lot about, um, of, of whatever it might be, it might be, you, you know a lot about electric cars, and it's going about a Tesla and saying, oh, yeah, this is um, a f fantastic bit of engineering, and uh, th this is going to be the future. And you know a lot about that. So you're saying, well, no, it's uh, it's, it's actually not going to work. It's, it's breaking the, the laws of thermodynamics, and this, uh, this ain't, ain't going to work on principle. What are you talking about? But then you flick through a few pages, and it talks about um, uh, football, for example, or soccer, sport, and it says, oh, yeah, this person's going to be uh, great for the team because of, of their history. You might be thinking, oh, great. Um, well, I look forward to having this person on board then, having just forgotten that it's the same publication that has just shown you that it is very fallible and rather incompetent in knowing what is true and what is false. Just the same kind of thing. So I, I would posit it to, to you all as well. If you hear something good or bad about someone or something from a particular news source, what else have you heard from them to know if it's uh, worth listening to the, the previous thing you've heard or not? I, I find that in day-to-day -day life as well. You might be talking to someone and you go, oh, well, th th this, this is very interesting, fair enough. And then it leads on to a, a topic which you know a lot about and they're talking their mouth off and talking absolute bollocks and then you call them up on that and then you realise, hang on, so... I only know a lot about like, one particular topic, and you've just mentioned that, and you're completely wrong, but you've said it with exactly the same confidence as the previous thing, which I thought you were speaking true about. So maybe what you've just said is bollocks as well. Uh, so yeah, that's, that is what I would put to you. Think about it, what, what you've heard about other people, maybe you've, they've been in a positive light and you haven't questioned it and you follow them blindly, in which case, well, maybe look more into it, or negatively. I, that's obviously why I look into socialism and communism so much, because I I hate it, and I, th I think it's deeply flawed, but maybe I, I've just been lied to, which is why I continue to look into it. If you are interested in the history of censorship and the effects it has on populace, I will be looking into uh, particularly Germany and Russia, because, of course, um, uh, was it? Uh, Das Kapital was um, outlawed where Stalin was studying, and yet he still got a copy of it and obviously used it to the detriment of the Russian people. So it clearly didn't work in that instance and led to the death of countless people. Really, I mean, there were only estimates because you're unsure about how many are linked to the effects of communism and how many people have just been unaccounted for because they've been erased from history, more than just killed. So... If you're interested in that, let me know and I will break it down on, in historical context, but for the time being, thank you very much for watching. Have a lovely day and I will see you next time.